Excellent. Um, welcome to anybody who is watching this either live or uh, after the fact. It is September 2021. We are in the midst of the um, COVID-19 pandemic, which makes this art exhibit even more um, remarkable. Um, we are here at Workspace, which is a two and a half story historic building in downtown Manchester, Connecticut. It's actually owned and operated by the town. It's an investment in um, entrepreneurship and innovation in community and in art and culture. And we work hard to see how all those things can blend and optimize uh, each other. And we have multiple offices, private offices. We have co-working space. We have seven meeting venues, including a digital story studio. But right now we are in the Main Street Gallery, which is our largest meeting space, as well as the largest of three art spaces. So the Main Street Gallery is currently hosting um, an exhibit that we didn't produce, but we are honored to be able to showcase. It was created by the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. I have Jackie Coleman here, the Chief Impact Officer. So she's gonna tell us more about the foundation. Um, but the exhibit is traveling around Connecticut and Jackie selected us as one of the venues and it's gotten a great response. Uh, we have 26 pieces here. There's more pieces online, so you can see the whole exhibit on their website. And there's also music, um, poetry, and what they did, in addition to having um, a small description by each picture, as many of these works have QR codes. So digitally, um, you hold up your phone and you can listen to the artist speak about their work. Um, which is lovely. So uh, we even have someone who has song lyrics here and you can actually hear the song by doing that. So there's a great connection between, you know, hand-drawn art, there's digital art, there's um, very personal poetry and then using uh, technology uh, like the Zoom presentation to connect people to the art and engage it in different ways. But first let's talk about the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, what its mission is and what your role is as the Chief Impact Officer. Well, actually I am the Senior Community Impact Officer. Okay. So slightly different, but you know, I appreciate the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great, so yes, I'm with the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving and the Hartford Foundation is uh, one of the oldest and one of the 10 largest community foundations in the country. Wow. Yeah, we actually have a billion dollar, oh, close to a billion dollar. It's not a billion dollars right yet, but it's very close, endowment. And so that's invested money. And each year the foundation draws down a percentage of the um, interest that's earned on that endowment. So typically right now it's about $34 million a year. And that money goes back out into the greater Hartford community. If you visit our website, you can see the 29 town region that mm -hmm. we consider sort of greater Hartford. It's sort of a different cut in some, some versions of greater Hartford. Um, and we, we've, we fund all sorts of nonprofits, really trying to build and promote um, a vibrant community, a vibrant region, you know? Um, <clears throat> so it could be, uh, basic human needs, it could be employment, it could be arts and culture, mm -hmm. education, youth development, all sorts of different areas. And in the last couple of years, we have went through a strategic planning process. And out of the strategic planning process, we, uh, we were beginning to talk about wanting to reduce disparities around race, place, and income, because we were starting to see this growing needs in the community centered around that. And so we were shifting more from being a responsive grant maker responding to nonprofits requesting funding to be more impactful and thoughtful and strategic. Mm -hmm. So we've developed um, different in, in different outcome areas, uh, short and midterm goals that would help us eventually to, we call it our North Star, to work on dismantling systemic racism. So, um, so that's, that's where we are. And I work very closely on the lead on the arts outcome team. And the arts outcome team, our sort of long-term goal that fits into the, the larger strategy of the foundation is, is really about reducing disparities with uh, equity and inclusion. So trying to build the most equitable and inclusive arts sector in the greater Hartford region as possible. So, um, and we have, you know, multiple short and midterm goals to, to move us towards that. So in this, this show is actually providing access for young people mm -hmm. to express themselves through the arts, um, and it, it actually also represents a nice broad representation of, of youth from across multiple different communities. 
Yeah, that's one of the things that we at the um, workspace and the galleries at workspace, which contains three separate art spaces, have really tried to do. In 2019, we uh, perspectives, uh, we called it Perspectives, We Are All Different, We Are All One, and it was our diversity, equity, and inclusion show. And through that process, we learned that all of our shows should be produced through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we're continuing with the Perspectives theme, because um, obviously there's you know ethnic, cultural, um, race differences, there's age differences, there's experience um, in the art world. So we'll have professional full-time artists, uh, artists who are trained, um, and then artists who are doing it as uh, on the side, and it will always be on the side, other artists who want to move into professional. Um, we have veterans who do it for therapy, um, although I think most artists will say that it is a therapeutic process and we'll talk a little bit about that with the, the theme of this show but it's definitely um we've so interesting when you get artists in a room together talking to each other mm -hmm. about the diversity of their artistic process the medium um and how they can learn from each other now these students well they're youth 13 to 19 mm -hmm. do you know how many people responded to your call for art uh, you know, the original uh, contest and call for art was actually in like August and September of 2020. Mm -hmm. So I'm reaching back yeah. a little bit. So it was an estimated probably about 34 uh, different pieces of art were submitted. Yeah. And again, you probably had a broad canvas. And I think that goes to show the people who had confidence enough to submit because we've talked to other people as well who don't feel that their stuff is worthy of a gallery showing. And then if we can convince them, you know, some of those people have sold their work because art is so subjective and personal that it touches you in different ways. But I have to say, my, my subjective opinion is that some of these people are extremely, extremely talented. Like you would walk through here and if you didn't know, it wouldn't occur to you that this is youth and experienced mm -hmm. artists. Like this is some powerful, powerful work. What was it like for your staff when the submission started coming in? I think there was excitement, you know, and, and uh, this, this show is actually in conjunction with our annual event called Greater Together. That's how we launched the show. Well, we wanted to have, you know, it was COVID and we had to do an all virtual sort of celebration instead of an in-person mm -hmm. big, you know, it's usually a thank you to donors and nonprofits. Um, and we had hundreds and hundreds of people on the Zoom call, which was really great. And what we wanted to do was to showcase like I think about a half dozen of the pieces um, and then let everyone know that the entire gallery was gonna be digitized. Uh, so that was actually how the, how the whole thing started. And when, when the staff started to see this, the, the different pieces come in, they were really excited. And I wanna mention, because we were talking a little bit about some connections that we had. Uh, we have an art, an artist of color advisory committee mm -hmm. at the Harper Foundation that's called the Artists of Color Unite. Um, I invite you to Google them. They're awesome and they're doing terrific things that you are connected to in mm -hmm. some ways and some of the other staff is connected to. Um, they actually were asked by our communications team to put together the little um, subcommittee that was going to review all these pieces and make a selection of six, which was, of course, very, very difficult. Right. And those six... Uh, had the opportunity to have an interview with our our special guest last year, which was Heather McGee. Uh, she was at the Greater Together event that we had, and she did one-on-one -on -one interviews with each of those six young people. So, so that was pretty exciting for them. And they didn't even know that this component was going to happen afterwards, or there was going to be an opportunity to show the work in person. Very nice. And so you're a member of the arts side of community um, development and engagement. Why, in the opinion of the Hartford Foundation, is arts so important? That's sort of my opinion. <laughs> no, but it also is, I think the, the opinion of the Hartford Foundation and my colleagues, I think we all believe that there's a, you know, a holistic ecosystem mm -hmm. to a community. I mean, it, honestly, there was some, some interesting conversations during COVID about what do we what do we need to fund, especially right when the pandemic hit, you know, there was a lot of calls from basic human needs, you know, and then we at the same time saw our arts sector starting to just be decimated and shuttered, you know, mm -hmm. and so we had to have some conversations internally about, you know, agree, we do value this, but, you know, maybe at this time we need to put more money here, but be thinking about how to be ready to, to shift and support this sector at this particular time. 
So it's sort of an, it's an interesting dynamic in that way. But the arts are absolutely, uh, you know, they drive the creative economy. And the creative economy, by that I mean, you know, if you think about it, all of the local businesses, like probably even restaurants here, when people come to the gallery here, they might decide to go out to eat you know, or they might visit a store nearby. So, uh, you know, we have lots of wonderful venues in downtown Hartford, and then there's the restaurants and mm -hmm. the hotels and, you know, all the other supporting events and things that, that happen around going to an event and celebrating. So the creative economy is important. And then, honestly, we've talked a lot during the pandemic about, and this connects directly to this exhibit, mm -hmm. mental health. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, um, the value of expression. And if you think about it during COVID, what got you through? Um, I think my close relationships, people that I could still see and relate to. I think um, I did do creative projects and probably Oreo cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, someone designed those Oreo cookies. Yes. A culinary artist <laughs> made those Oreo cookies. I know and a lot of people have uh, relied on music, mm -hmm. have relied on, you know, streaming performances, opportunities to come together in new way. I mean, frankly, even like you mentioned, media arts. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that we're even using all of these tools that we have, that's that's creative, that's connected to yeah. that, to that whole world. So so I think it's it's that important. I mean, not necessarily, I'm not suggesting it's more important than, you know, a food pantry or, you know, in those moments when those are really real things. But when you're thinking of a cohesive collective culture and community and sector, you need to have all of these pieces in order for it to be really healthy and vibrant. Yeah, I think for those who are um, familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm -hmm. obviously you need your physical, biological right. uh, survival needs to be met, your food and shelter and physical well-being. But beyond that, you need the emotional, uh, creative um, stimulation and connection and art, writing, reading, um, it's definitely, expression. yeah, creative expression is a way to do that. And here at Workspace, you know, we're here to be a, a portable, flexible, and hospitable environment for people to um, grow their businesses. And with entrepreneurs and nonprofit leaders, it's a very creative industry. Mm -hmm. These things are changing all the time. You have to think outside the box and to be surrounded by art. You know, it's not just an office building with cubicles that provides your survival needs, you know, yeah. In business, you have the internet, you have the desk, you have, you have the computer and everything. But people really do um, get energized uh, by the atmosphere, which is set by the tone of having art all around and changing. So it definitely, definitely has an impact. Um, are there donors to your organization who specifically want to contribute to the arts or maybe don't want to contribute? <laughs> <laughs> I think we probably have both. Yeah. I and mean, there's quite a few donors. There's something called donor advised funds mm -hmm. and definitely some of the donor advised funds uh, you know, are centrally connected to supporting arts in the community. We also have something called field of interest funds where the donor, donor no longer necessarily wants a direct say, but they want to make sure that it goes to the arts or to Manchester or, you know, to reentry, you know, wherever it is. So there's definitely those pockets. And, and I'm sure there's individual donors too, who, you know, when they talk about what they really love about what's happening with the, with the resources at the foundation, but there's particular areas that they're most interested in. Um, how long have you been with the foundation? I'm coming up on five years. Excellent. Have you seen a change either pre-COVID or because of COVID in people's um, interest and engagement in the broader community? Um, I would say there's there's been a shift definitely in, you know, during during I mean, during COVID. Um, it just immediately in my mind goes to the social unrest um, and, and this sort of quell of learning and um, curiosity and, and emotion, frankly, around everything that's become right in front of our faces. And I think in that way, there's been there's been a sense of community. And sometimes that sense of community is actually disengaged. <laughs> some are disengaging because, you know, some they're trying to take a stand about what this organization, mm -hmm. you know, like for example, I don't know if you heard about in the theater industry, there was a there was a paper written uh, called We See You white American theater. It's a, it's a pretty intense, you can Google it and, and read it. And it's really a, a treatise to uh, 
traditional white American theater that has been built on, you know, European approaches mm -hmm. to, to doing theater. And that has in some ways made, you know, push some things to really happen where, you know, some, some people are stepping away and exiting while the community kind of figures out what does this mean? We need to learn more about this. How do we move forward? And I think that's trickling in the art sector too, to all of the art forms. And, um, and I hear it, you know, I hear it when I'm talking with my colleagues, it's definitely, there's definitely a, a different conversation happening yeah. out there. So, yeah. And I think the arts reflect and respond to, um, social unrest and really can be a catalyst for social change. I mean, the George Floyd, I mean, the imagery, um, you have the actual video that happened, but then the artwork, um, the commemoration of him that took on, took on a life of its own. So the arts are, I think, really instrumental in for the artists, their own personal um, processing, but also in the role it plays. Um, when the pandemic, first started and we basically shut down, we still wanted something in our window. So um, Better Manchester Magazine was collecting, you know, cell phone shots of people called happy things, you know? So they did a digital and a, a digital um, gallery of just images of friends and family and the view outside your window and a coffee cup and a lot of pets. Um, <laughs> so that was all online. And there were many physical galleries that transitioned to do an online yes. gallery. We did the opposite. We took the Better Manchester online gallery, printed them up in large form and splattered them all over our window. So the people who were out and about driving or walking could see that. Um, kind of thing and we got a you know a great positive response and also these people did not probably consider themselves artists they were just submitting to a little community um mm -hmm. thing and then you drive by and see your image in a gallery window so it was nice that we were able to do that i'm going to talk with you for a few minutes if anybody on zoom um does want to ask a question could you just put in the chat that you'd like to speak um and then we will uh, call on you in a, in a few minutes so I'm curious, what's the difference, and maybe there isn't, between the foundation and other, what is, you know, called a foundation versus other types of nonprofits? Is this different to your knowledge? Well, foundation, I know of organizations that have the word foundation in their title mm -hmm. that are not grant making or fundraising for grant making. Um, they are just the, the title of it is, right. is, is a nonprofit and they use the word foundation. I think many, many, many foundations, however, are actually affiliated and connected to grant making. You can have family foundations, corporate, I mean, most large corporate entities, even mm -hmm. smaller ones have a division, even, you know, colleges have a, have a right. philanthropic arm, which they may or may not fall. Like, I think there's the Yukon Foundation. Yeah, and there's the Manchester Community College Foundation, yeah. which used to operate the gallery here. Um, before focusing back on, on campus. So, okay, well, that's, a, that's a good distinction. Mm -hmm. And in terms of this um, art exhibit, so you selected the art and what do you hope is the impact that it has? It's been in three locations so far. Mm -hmm. So the West Hartford Jewish Foundation, uh, the West Hartford Jewish Community Center, and then the Canton Library. And now it's here in Manchester and it's going to the Hartford Public Library next. Um, so. What are you hope? What are you hoping for the engagement, either with the general public, with the artists, or with your funders? Well, I think the the original conception of the art art in action contest, which is the name of the contest mm -hmm. that we launched for the Greater Together event. I don't even know if we mentioned that. This is the art in action. Art in action exhibit. 2020 exhibit. Yes, and uh, the 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 charge to the artists was to respond to what they were feeling, what was going on in the world, just provide something that they're um, that they're making right now during this time. So that's what's kind of special too, I think about this mm -hmm. exhibit is that it is, was intended to capture time. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys can see this image here. Can you, it's called the what path? The path to recovery. The path to recovery. And it's, I mean, this beautiful drawing of these eyes where I, mean, I see pain, I see, you know, hope and also deep sadness, confusion, I and mean, just, you know, mm -hmm. I, I see a lot in it. And I think, you know, a lot of them have different sort of takes and some of them actually took a, like a, I want to do something happy, like right. so you're a happy thing. So, so I think that that was really exciting. And I, I think our initial intention was to provide an avenue for expression, which is, I think we succeeded with the initial, you know, contest itself. 
And then we wanted to provide some positive experiences for the young artists. So that's why we made the online gallery and had the opportunity for some of them to make other feet. It was actually after the Greater Together online event that a community member approached us and said, you know, we had the art scrolling on the screen. So this art is so amazing. Are you guys planning to do a, a, you know, a traveling exhibition with it? And so, yeah, so it was like, it, once it was, a, we were being responsive somewhat to the community. We talked about it and thought, that's a really interesting idea. And what if we could find, a, you know, a couple of communities where some of the artists are? I don't mm -hmm. know if you want to shout out some of the Manchester artists. Yes, have. well, one is right behind you, Brianna. Um, my emotions. Yeah, and there are two others. I don't know the names off the top of the of my uh, tongue, but um, we will get them in the comment section. And for anybody who wants to see the art exhibit, um, we have a link on our website, but you can Google Hartford Foundation for Public Giving and Art in Action, and it will come up. And it's a really wonderful, um, wonderful exhibit. Uh, Tom Andrea is on Zoom, and he has a question to contribute. Thank you, Stacy. Jackie, hello. Um, the, the minute the minute you turn the microphone on, the pet activates the pets. I understand that. All right, that's okay. First of all, does um, Mr. Brad Drazen still work with the foundation? Mr. Brad Drazen does still work with the foundation. He's given my best. He and I used I, to work together, so he's okay. he's a wonderful guy. So so please do, um, and tell him I'm retired now. So anyway, um, okay. I you 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 just sort of beat me to the punch because I was going to ask, where are these sixteen locations? I think a traveling exhibition is a wonderful idea. I think it's absolutely terrific. Oh, so it's just going to, it's not just, it's going to four. four I think it's of wonderful. The 16 towns that the artists are from. I yeah. Think that's okay, four, all right. I, those four, I think that's a great idea to have this traveling around. And I like workspace because it's accessible, both in terms of its location. I can knock on the door and walk in, but also what's most important to me is that it's accessible with its price points of art that's for sale. And I now own two pieces that I bought at um, Workspace and I have my eye on a third and, it's, and, and the painter is Naomi and I don't know if it's the same Naomi that's on the screen here, um, but it, it's, it's, it's something yes. um, she, it, and, and if it and is- now you Naomi, have to buy it because she could hear you. I, I love her, her um, paintings of uh, clouds and, and of the sky. My point is, and I think it's wonderful for the artist to have people buy their art without us having to spend thousands of dollars and then something that we would never do. And I think that accessibility, both in location and in price, I think is wonderful for the art community, uh, both in terms of the artist and of the patron or, uh, or uh, the buyer. I think it even develops more um, closer ties. And um, I, I just think this is, you know, when I first got to, when I first became aware of our workspace, I wanted to see works done by artists that I knew and I didn't. And I was like, oh, I wonder, and, and I think that's the genius. You mean that by, by names that you recognize, like well, well-known artists? Right, and so I think that's the genius of workspace is that it is truly a community art gallery, that it highlights people from the community and then it allows us to buy the work. And I think there's something very cool about that. You have single-handedly changed my mind about that. I'll go to the New Britain Museum of Art in the Wadsworth to see the Solowitz and, and, and all of those, but I like how I can come to my local art gallery and see what artists are doing from my area and the 16 surrounding towns. So I think it can be a really exciting time. And Tom, we've fulfilled your expectations as well because you've, you've met at least one of the artists that you've purchased, right? Did you meet Allie? I met Allie via social media. Okay, so you know Allie, and if you come here right. on Saturday, Naomi will be here painting live on site. So you yeah, can't purchase work of people you know, but now it's a, that you have a personal relationship with the artist, not just name recognition. Um, no, but I, I will say that, um, again, that represents the diversity of the type of work we have here, because in the last six months, we have sold two pieces that are um, more than $2,000. Wow. And, yeah. um, 
because we also, uh, you know, as a, as a workspace, we develop people to develop their businesses. So when artists are at that level and feel comfortable charging um, what, you know, the higher end of, of what a piece of art could sell for, um, there is that diversity, but thank you, Tom. And Tom, is, uh, we have a new membership model here at Workspace. So people can join um, at our, you know, Muse level for $36 a year, and it gets you the privilege of being able to sell in our little gallery shop. Um, and we try to connect you, uh, proactively connect you with opportunities. We've had some people inquire about commissions. We've hired some people to paint the Jersey barriers, you know, outside, um, lead classes. So of course the membership core um, is that. And then there's other more sponsoring members at 250 and $500 uh, levels, if anybody's interested. Um, and there's additional benefits in terms of using the space and being part of our community. We're not yet at a granting uh, <laughs> of giving grants, but we definitely, um, we're gonna be working with the nonprofit Rise Up and Connecticut Murals to offer um, business for artists workshops. Right. So that right. people who know how to price your work, where to get materials, how to do online marketing, and then the artists themselves will tell us what topics they want, they want to discuss. And then, you know, and how do you talk to people? Because many artists or like many business people are introverts. But if you are going to be painting live on site or selling at, um, you know, plein air events and outdoor at markets, that engagement is part of the really important enticing for the people purchasing the art. Um, just trying to see if there's any other comments to answer. Uh, oh, Anne is interested in knowing what funding opportunities are available to community organizations for the arts. Oh, excellent question. Um, I would say. Uh, the arts funding at the Harper Foundation over the last few years has shifted greatly as we have gone from that more responsive model, which a lot of the arts organizations just came in and asked for funding for various things. And based on, you know, the, the policies and criteria would be either granted or, or discouraged at the time. Um, that has shifted because we actually included arts as one of our outcome areas. So if you want to visit the website and check out the arts outcome team and, and see what the, um, the criteria are for you know, our, our goals, basically. And if you are a community arts organization that um, either already, like you can see yourself right in one of those goals, or you have a program or project you want to start that would allow that impact to be made into the community, then I would absolutely recommend you give a call to Tara Sundy, or you can email her. She's, she's sort of our first, our first connection out to the community. And she's, she has a broad knowledge of not only what the arts outcome team is, is considering for grant making, but to your point, the donor advised funds, mm -hmm. field of interest, the nonprofit support program, if that's a good fit, small agencies. So she's a, she's a good contact to align, you know, to, to everything that's an opportunity in the foundation. But I would say for sure to, to have a look at those arts outcomes and see if you connect to them. And maybe some arts organizations are actually finding that they connect better with what we call Siri, which is civic engagement and resident engagement. That actually they're, what they're doing is engaging people. They're using the arts, but their impact is engagement. So you could also look at some of the other outcome areas and see if maybe your art, the arts for the organization is a means to a different outcome, if that makes sense. So that was a lot. I don't know if that was clear. Just call and someone will guide you <laughs> yeah, to the right Tara, place. I would, yeah. I mean, you can just even call Tara without looking at anything, but I think it might be a richer, more meaningful conversation if you have a, a little bit of a sense of where the organization fits in. Yeah, and that's all Siri, um, at, that Siri ahead, at, oh, thank you. That Siri at, acronym you said reminds me of workspace, to be honest with you. And Jackie We will be calling Tara as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, we actually Jackie, want to have an artist in residence here and provide them space. Um, they can work on their own stuff, maybe get an honorarium and nice. then help us with our community engagement. Excellent. So I don't know if that's something for our foundation, we'll call and inquire, but, um, you know, UConn Art School, you know, graduates, mm -hmm. a fellowship or something like that. So we're always thinking of how, you know, we can work and partner um, with other people, which obviously is something that the Hearts Foundation does, does a lot. But I think that's another way is the arts are bringing so many people together and that's what we see it as its role and I think it also does heal 
Um, and um, can you can you say anything about that in terms of the community and the focus? So you talked about, and I know that other organizations, arts and otherwise, are now really using equity, um, inclusivity, I think accessibility, relevance, um, and diversity as criteria for where they're going to give their money. So if you're not dealing with that at all, um, it might not be your main mission, mm -hmm. but you have to be open to recognize that when we don't deal with it, there are minorities that fall to the, the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to find a question here somewhere. <laughs> so um, the, the question is in this term, the race and equity issues that are happening, what is your goal for, for the arts in terms of raising up the community and healing some of these historic divides? Mm. Well, we have like, we have the Artists of Color Unite, mm -hmm. which is the advisory committee that I mentioned, and there are fifteen artists of color in that. Um, and we we formed that committee because we did a Greater Hartford Arts Landscape Study uh, two years ago in twenty nineteen, and one of the findings was that this is not surprising, but we have a dearth of artists of color and arts leaders of color in Hartford. So we wanted to address that disparity, especially given the direction of our strategic plan. And so we said, well, we probably should ask the community. We should check with artists of color first, mm -hmm. if that sounds accurate and their thoughts about how to do that. And when we did, we had a wonderful convening um, at the 224 Eco Space mm -hmm. in, in downtown, in Hartford, I should say not too far from downtown. Um, and we had about 60 artists of color. Well, and mostly artists of color. I think we had five maybe white allies that were in attendance as well. Um, and really what we heard from them was, you know, if you want to put resources into the community and lift up artists of color, uh, nothing without us, nothing about without us, you know, so, so give us the opportunity to have some power in how these resources are deployed. And so we came back to them, had another meeting and said, we think that we need an advisory committee and we need to allocate some funding for this committee to make recommendations. So that's what we've done. Um, and I say all of that because we are really relying on their recommendations to us to understand the best possible ways to dismantle you know, mm -hmm. the, the practices and to heal and to do what, you know, what needs to be done. And so we have some really exciting projects that are happening now from some of those recommendations um, that I think are, that are really starting to, to scratch at the surface of some, of some of that healing. I'm not sure if I answered your question. Yeah, no, well, it was, yes. And okay. um, it made me think about when we did that first perspective show and we were calling it a diversity show, white artists felt like they didn't belong that it was just for colored people, like diversity means them, other, not all of us mm -hmm. together. So it is challenging because as white people who care about this, what can we do um, to facilitate healing and conversation and more equity um, when that's not, you know, we're not the experiencers of it and we shouldn't be dictating what happens. But I think that's, you know, what we do at Workspace and what we are doing is creating a safe space for those conversations to, to take place. And I think it's yeah, really I important. Mean, I've been learning a lot as because I'm a white woman facilitating mm -hmm. this, this group of artists. And um, recently we have an external evaluator working alongside them so we can have some learnings along the way. And she said this beautiful thing the other day. And it was such a compliment. She said, no, Jackie, you're in service, you know, and that's how I wanted to be with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm the guy that connects back to, you know, the policies, practices, and procedures of the Harper Foundation and the processes that, that we're going to undertake to get money out in the community. But I just want to listen, you know, and I want to, I want to find a way to help them realize whatever it is that they're, they're, they're going to know better because they're feeling things and experiencing the world in a completely different way. than I Right. And I Jackie, think that's a good perspective. Oh, go ahead, Tom. Jackie, Im impact is in your title. Are you measuring the impact of this exhibition at Workspace or at all four locations? How are you measuring the impact of this specific project? You know, it's a, in this specific case, I think it's a, um, a softer measure 
then you don't like that we're investing in an external evaluator for this you know, much larger financial investment that we're making. Uh, with each of the different locations, when we were first talking to them about hosting it, we did talk about some measures and you know, what do you think is gonna happen? What do you expect? You know, what, what's your goal? And at the same time, you know, we're a community foundation, we're a part of the community, we know, and even before COVID, but definitely in COVID, whatever you may have set as a benchmark target could be completely obliterated because you have the, the Delta variant. You know, you might have thought we can get 25 people to come in here at some point, and you may just not. And it's not because, you know, they haven't done everything, but yet there's this going on, right? And this is going to be in the live archive library. So this at least will be able to reach some people. So I think it's sort of a fluid measure of, of what that impact is. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, we so. are tracking the numbers of people who come in, but it does occur to me that if we actually had little evaluations or things where people could write feedback or testimonial. Mm -hmm. the majority of people decline, um, but I think Tom brings up a good point moving forward, we will do that. And what's nice is that we currently have two exhibits. So the artists in the staycation exhibit send people down to look at their art in that exhibit, and they look at this exhibit and vice versa, people come in to look at this exhibit and they're like, there's another one around in the loop gallery. So people are coming in, um, obviously not in the numbers that we used to have them, but we now have a gallery shop in the window and people do come in to check us out. Other businesses on Main Street, <laughs> other, you know, we don't sell our own mugs. There you don't go, another good all. idea. Um, we'll sell our own swag. <laughs> and, um, you know, people walk up and down Main Street and they come in here and you're exactly right. We are saying, you know, if you're here at mealtime, you know, can we recommend any restaurants to you? Mm -hmm. I mean, Main Street Manchester is like Epcot Center. There's so many different, <laughs> um, there's Machu Picchu and there's Chinese, there's two Mexicans, a traditional one uh, and a, a one where you can get Kung Pao shrimp uh, burrito <laughs> bowl. And um, we've got a vegetarian restaurant around the corner and Japanese and Thai and, um, the Bistro and Firestone is another art place where you can actually make art. Um, you have a new cheesecake factory up the street, not that it's the Manchester Cheesecake Company where she makes little design, talk about art, little designer cheesecakes. So, you know, COVID definitely did um, slow us down, but the town itself is so committed to the revitalization, um, invested in these Jersey barriers so that more restaurants could have outdoor seating, hired, you know, this nonprofit Connecticut murals to paint the barriers. We had some of our artists paint barriers, there's murals coming up. So there's definitely an awareness that art and color and expression has a positive impact in bringing people out. And although we don't have metrics, people are definitely seeing it and saying, um, that it's, it's an improvement and it's so engaging. Um, so we're excited about that. Are there any other questions online? Um, I hear that Naomi's there. Do you wanna talk about the creation of your art? Um, I know that I, who consider myself artistic, but maybe not an artist, actually have three pieces in the staycation exhibit. Oh. Um, you know, I've got pebble people because I Google do it yourself pebble people. And I made these pictures of these, you know, girls for my girlfriends who've been friends for, not important how long we've been friends, but it's been a very, <laughs> very long time since uh, junior high school. And uh, one, you know, with my my dog and stuff. And it's just fun and it's something to do. And although, yes, I, I have watched, streamed many, many shows, um, but you got to get away from, you know, that passive mm -hmm. engagement and do something. And there's a book called Connecticut 169 that features all the different 169 towns mm -hmm. Um, in Connecticut. So we've been taking road trips, you know, and we could bring the dog because we knew we weren't going in anywhere. <laughs> we were going walks and waterfalls and dams and parks and, and things like that. So it very proactively have to be creative mm -hmm. in times like this, whether it's, you know, art or not. Um, let's see. So what, what's next for your, uh, your art and culture group? What's next for our art and culture group? The arts, you mean Arts yeah. of Color Unite? Okay. No, for no. The, the commission that you're in charge of. The oh, arts. just the arts outcome team? Yes. Yeah, we're actually right now, frankly, in the process of talking about 2022. We're looking at work planning. We're looking at where we've made investments this year, you know, and 
and where we think those investments align to some of the outcomes we've identified and where we feel like we actually, in order to get to where we want in the longer term in you know, five, seven years, you know, do we need to think more about, for example, the youth? You know, that's one mm -hmm. sector. Do we need to think more about BIPOC-led, you know, um, people of color-led arts organizations mm -hmm. or smaller culturally driven arts? I mean, we sort of have these different um, potential uh, units, you know, groups that we, you know, we're thinking of, you know, where where would we target our support in order to try to move the needle? So that's what we're doing right now is having those kind of conversations, kind of closing out the year. I'm looking forward to this you know, exhibit moving to Hartford um, and closing out at the Hartford Public Library, yeah. which I'm so excited that they're willing to do that. I think it's terrific that three of our venues have been, I mean, two of our venues have been libraries mm -hmm. and one has been connected to the town. Yeah. So I think, I think that's really exciting. I think we have um, the Artists of Color Accelerate, which right now is being managed by the 224 Eco Space in Hartford. Uh, they, they have 10 Artists of Color Fellows paired with 10 our arts organizations and they're going to be creating something together and then have a pitch day in November. And then uh, another investment that the Artists of Color Unites recommended was the Independent Artist Fund, um, which is funding independent artists to do arts projects in, in the next year. So, uh, so there's a lot and we're starting to see and hear crossover. So I think we're also starting to think about how, how does seeing and hearing about that crossover, what story does that tell us about the impact we're having? Back to Tom's question, you know, is, it, is, that, a, is that actually like a measure that we can attribute to some of the things that have been happening? So. Yeah, and using art to raise awareness. We've had conversations recently because we're almost done planning our 2022 calendar and then people come to us with an idea and we're like, oh, where can we, you know, squeeze it in? We, we wanted to do an art and autism show. Um, featuring um, you know, the work of people on the spectrum. We had somebody come in, she's a sculptress and she's legally blind. Oh, wow. So we thought about doing like artists without limits of people with physical um, disabilities. We've had many artists who've been very forthright about their struggles with mental health. Um, and then we had a gentleman in here and we were talking with him and you know, he works with recovering addicts. And you know, to do an art show of people whose life has been impacted by by addiction, and it's all these great ideas and um, and themes as opposed to just watercolors, which mm -hmm. are lovely. Um, so really figuring out, you know, prioritizing like, what can we do, and we don't want to just do an art show. We want to do experiences mm -hmm. um, where people can come together. Whether we do art classes, we do conversations. We did a Juneteenth art exhibit, and we had a professor from UConn, Dexter Gabriel, who talked with us about Juneteenth um, celebration or commemoration, and really got into the cultural impact. And again, as a white woman. I could just open up the conversation and let him talk about his studies and his experience and then other community members of color chimed in in the conversation and it was just very enlightening and it wouldn't have happened if we didn't have a Juneteenth art exhibit mm -hmm. um, kind of thing. So great. Um, trying to see, to see if anybody has, Naomi, would you like to uh, chime in with a question, introduce yourself? Yes, uh, first I just want to say thank you for everything you're organizing and how accessible it is to everyone, to artists and to the community and uh, just free for everyone. It's quite unique, I think, uh, to find opportunities like that, to connect with uh, people around you and to show your work without uh, to investing in that opportunity. And um, I'm really happy to be there Saturday too. I like painting on site and especially during the pandemic, it's a way to um, really be in the moment, just go somewhere and find a place and um, be in that moment knowing you have to finish it at that sitting, right? And oh that's it it's like this unique thing that you can do and be all in it and it's gone so it changes the way that you even work and it's so different than the day-to-day -day life during that time well thank you naomi i appreciate your your feedback your can you tell us a little bit about your work that's in the staycation exhibit right now uh, yeah, so all of that work was uh, done around the house or around the community. 
and um, a lot of it was done on site in one or two sittings. Uh, and it was just um, a way of being in the moment that, that, that is positive and helpful for me. And I guess just for looking back to Great. Well, we love having your work here and we're excited for Saturday. Um, Workspace, again, started really as a co-working meeting space. And then um, when MCC, who was curating the gallery, decided to focus back on the galleries they have on campus, we took it over and integrated it uh, with the galleries. And we were never open on weekends because mm -hmm. our staff was busy here on weekdays with the people who are using us as, a, as an office and meeting space. Um, so now we're open on the second Saturday of every month from 10 to two. So we have that, hopefully our hours will expand at some point. The downtown special services district um, selected the second Saturdays to start doing their special events. Um, the Firestone down the street selected the second Saturdays to start doing their monthly market. And we're hoping more businesses um, get on board as you, so that we can become you know, a destination. Uh, Main streets are coming back, we, we think, as some malls are falling to the, the wayside. And you know, art and culture and food, um, music, we have a town troubadour. Manchester also has a poet laureate. I'm hoping to bring in an artist in residence. So um, infusing these perspectives into what's happening in the community. Um, which is us confronting some of the racial uh, equities, you know, in day-to-day -day living, in housing, in school, in community leadership, that I think it definitely is healing and, and getting better and more vibrant, as you what say. What time on Saturday will Naomi be there? Naomi's going to be painting um, from 10 to 1, and then at 1 o'clock, we're going to stop that for the last hour of our open house. We're going to have a gathering of artists, so whoever feels comfortable um, coming and talking in person. It's an opportunity for artists to get to know each other, for them to talk about their work that's on the wall. Um, people, art lovers are welcome to come. We have gallery members, prospective members, non-members are all welcome. It's gonna be the same Zoom link as this was. So people interested can just um, log on by Zoom as well uh, to listen. And basically we're using that as a opportunity for artists to get to know each other, um, share their appreciation of each other and their tips. Um, we're using it as an opportunity to talk about, so what happens next for workspace? How can we have a greater impact on the computer, uh, community? Who can we partner with? And then it also happens to be the 20th anniversary of 9-11. So I think we're gonna talk about that and the impact that it had on us. Um, and, you know, if arts were relevant, um, you know, the imagery and, you know, I was listening to NPR and they're talking with authors who've written fiction books um about just based on the 9-11 the memorial in in new york is mm -hmm. a piece of art i mean the the fountain they mm -hmm. created and you know and i think of all the images in like time magazine all of that mm -hmm. just was very powerful yeah, it, is, it, it is amazing i think your idea stacy about an exhibition maybe with four people with autism or people that suffer from addiction i think that's absolutely wonderful i think again you're you're pinpointing a local issue, local artists, and you're giving them the space to express themselves and and sell sell their art. I, I just love this idea. And because again, I think it makes then your art gallery more inviting. Some people are overwhelmed with art. Some people can't go to an art gallery because they're afraid they won't get it or they don't get it or they don't like it. I hear a lot about that with my friends, even the painting that I had done done for me, some of my friends will say, "I don't get it. What's you know why why do you do this?" They don't get the personal connection or what it means to me. The fact that you are opening up and letting everyday people become artists, I think is brilliant. I think it's very important. I think that also builds community ties. And I'm really happy to hear that you're open on a Saturday once a month at least, because I think galleries need to be open on yeah. a weekend because uh, people don't get there during the week. I think it's really important. And hopefully that will become a thing this second Tuesday, the second The second Saturday, Saturday is a thing. So that's definitive moving forward. And we'd like to be open 
you know, when restaurants are more populated, although Main Street is doing well, if, um, I was going to say there's hard to find parking, but you shouldn't be discouraged because we've got big lots in the back. But, yep. uh, you know, it is, they are, they are busy and we've got four breweries in town and, um, you know, and a lot of them have art in them as well. A tattoo parlor is opening up, up the street and she's also having a little gallery. Um, we're hoping a bookshop's going to come in and they're, you know, focused, you know, the art is important to the aesthetic that she's going to create. So we are very excited and that art's going to play more, more of a role and yeah, and that we can facilitate opportunities, of, you know, inspiration for people to actually create art. As Naomi was saying, it's like, all right, this is our deadline for submission. <laughs> so there's an impetus for people to maybe you know, have a project they haven't finished. One of our projects this past year or in 20, yeah, 2020, I don't remember. Where, where are we? Um, it was fresh starts during the pandemic. We did a fresh start exhibit where we gave out 18 by 24 canvases and said, please return it with art. And we collected a $10 deposit. I remember one artist coming to return the art. She's like, it's a good thing you did the $10 deposit because if it was $5, I probably wouldn't have finished this. And I would have just let you keep the $5. The $10 was enough. So she brought this beautiful piece of art back. She said, thank you for the motivation. And I gave her $10 back. But um, so we're gonna continue to do things things like that because you know people do need we're all about giving treating people hospitably and giving them the attention that makes them feel special because everybody is special and uh you know if they they can we can bring it out which I think is what you do and all the funding funding that you do so thank you for the work that you're doing thank you for spending an evening with us Absolutely. um it's nice to be in conversation. We do wear our masks around here 24-7, uh, but we opted to take it off for, for the conversation, um, uh, both being vaccinated and whatnot. But yeah, we, we do um, wear our masks and keep people safe. And people are coming in to see the gallery. You know, and the good thing about, you know, small galleries is chances are when you come in here, you're probably going to be the only one looking at the exhibit. So it's a very safe social distance. <laughs> um, even on Saturdays, we won't let the crowds, uh, crowds get too big. So I think that's um, it. If you're interested in workspace, uh, our website is workspacemanchester.com here in Manchester, Connecticut. And your website is at your phone. I think it's www.hf pg.org. Yes. I'm fairly certain. Yes. <laughs> um, and the art and action exhibit definitely is worth um, checking out online or it's going to be moving to the um, Hartford Public Library in October. It's coming down here September 24th. Um, but the online version is lovely. And then for people who want to see our art um, online, we set up a Facebook gallery. Uh, in our in our Facebook album. So thank you for being with us, uh, Tom and Naomi and Anne and anyone else who joined us on Zoom. Um, thank you to those people who are watching this after the fact. And thank you so much um, for the privilege of having this art in our space. It's stimulating. Um, I see something new every time I walk by and for the ongoing work that, that you're, you're doing, maintaining this deep, rich history of the foundation. Thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to, to share this beautiful art and for, for hosting it and caring for it and shepherding it on to the Hartford Public Library for being yes. such a wonderful community partner. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. And that's the end. Um, so we will say night. Tom, anything else? No, just have a uh, thank you for this time. And uh, everyone have a pleasant evening. Nice to meet you, Naomi. Hi, Anne. Nice to meet you. And Jackie, nice to meet you, of course. Nice to meet bye you. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.